Um, but I'm really excited uh, to be here to, uh, for the launch of Amex new initiative, the Integrated Evaluation Framework, because a huge amount of hard work has gone into this by a very big um, group uh, of people who uh, say put in a huge amount of hard work, but they're a very talented group as well. And I have two of them here today, two of the key members, Professor Jim McNamara of the University of Technology, all the way from Sydney, uh, and also the head of Amex Academic Advisory Board. Uh, and Jim's played a crucial part in helping guide us and shape us uh, with our thinking for this framework. And also Giles Petty, who is the boss of Lewis PR. Jim's, uh, Giles has played an equally as important part because he's kept us real in terms of thinking about how this stuff matters for PR and communications people. But on top of that, uh, we're very grateful to Lewis who've donated a lot of their excellent development uh, and IT resource to bring our framework and our resource center, I think it's very important we bear in mind there's two things you're about to see today, um, to life. Um, why does this stuff matter so much? Well, because it's at the heart of everything that AMEC stands for. We're a trade association that wants to uh, increase the market size for all of our members across the world. And we do that through educational initiatives, driving best practice, having resources, education that's credible, meaningful, and also easy enough to work with right across, right across um, the world. And we've been doing that for a number, of, uh, a number of years. And so it's been a long journey. If we think back to our second summit, Barcelona in 2010, that was where, of course, we launched the Barcelona Principles, where we were encouraging people to focus on business objectives, the importance of, of planning, and to move from outputs to outcomes in the way that they thought. And these were statements. These were a, a helicopter view, if you like, on what we needed to do. In 2011, we wanted to bring that to life, and that was where we had the valid metrics framework, and they, they, they were launched. In 2013, the world had moved on, and we were asked to produce guidance for the social uh, media sphere, and we created the social media framework with uh, Don Bartholomew, who, of course, we heard about um, yesterday. Um, in 2014, we went back to focusing on education and support material, and that was all about um, bringing the social media framework to life with a user guide, with videos, and with that kind of um, support information. And then back in uh, Stockholm last year, it was a refresh of the Barcelona Principles 2.0 to bring them up to date with how the communications world has moved on. And of course, uh, it, needed to be, it needed to reflect the language, the emphasis that the PRs and communications people are working to now, which of course is largely um, about integrated uh, integrated communications. So let's have a look at these frameworks because of course we're going to be replacing these frameworks. Let's have a look in this journey of what we had. Well here, here we have the valid metrics framework um, and what you can see is that we're showing how to operationalize those original Barcelona principles in terms of um, moving the world on from just measuring outputs, that content analysis, to linking the measurement to the stuff that matters, the organizational objectives, the business results in that bottom right-hand corner. And so on the x-axis across the top there then, we've got the steps of the marketing funnel. And down the y-axis, we're showing how PR feeds into those different steps. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the social media measurement framework came next in 2013, and, and here it is. And the main difference here, again, across the x-axis, is effectively the steps of the marketing funnel. Um, but we changed the language to reflect the uh, work that was going on at the time in terms of trying to set some standards and best practice around different steps of social media measurement. So we've got exposure, engagement, influence, impact, and advocacy. And here you can see for the first time we're starting to talk about channels and tactics as well. And in this example, we've got paid, owned, and earned media. Um, and after we launched this framework, Don and I were talking, and we realized that there were some challenges with it. First of all, what we called it. We called it a social media measurement framework, but it isn't only social media. Those steps on the y-axis there, paid, owned, and earned, aren't just appropriate to social media. In many ways, this was beta version one of an integrated uh, evaluation, uh, evaluation um, framework. Um, so, what we had to do 
was update it. And I asked the AMEC board for their support in allowing us to put together a group to do exactly that and to, uh, to focus on a proper integrated evaluation framework. And if we were to do that, we had to do it with the resource and the support and the information that's going to help all of you guys um, to, to, to use it. And they gave me that support and we put together a big group to do that. And we needed to answer um, two key questions. With the launch of the Barstone Principles 2.0, some of the uh, there was small elements of criticism that were thrown out at us, which were that this is still a helicopter view. How do we actually do this? Where are the metrics? What's the process? How do we bring this to life for our clients? So we had to um, answer that. We also had to answer the problem that outputs had really come to now. And this is from a, uh, a conference in America last week. Uh, Alison Hughley is here somewhere. Uh, this is one of her slides. Um, Alison's a leader in PR measurement. And from her slide, she's saying stop counting impressions. Many of these output metrics that we've counted on for years and years and years are losing their relevance. And if we're going to help communicators and PR people prove their value, we have to move the measurement on from not just outputs to outtakes and outcomes. We've been talking about it for years. Now it's time to do it. So these were the, 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 the two really big challenges. So how can we do that and do it in a meaningful, credible way that the industry can, can, can get behind uh, and that speaks to our ambition with, with providing resource. So um, as I'm about to hand over then to Jim, he's going to tell us a little bit more, I thought this is our third model and I'm a big fan of Tesla Motor Company and uh, there's Elon Musk, Musk launching, uh, launching his, model three, um, his Model 3 vehicle. What I want to assure everybody is that this has been a very careful and inclusive uh, development process. So first of all, we had a broad church of people from PR agencies, from in-house, from academia, uh, and from other trade associations as well. And you'll hear from Jim a little bit about the Academic Advisory Board, which includes many uh, great minds from uh, friends and colleagues like the Institute for Public Relations and other uh, academics around the world. And we're grateful to them for the contribution that they've made and to our friends in the room as well from the cabinet office and organizations like that. And also it's important that it's not just about integrated communications measurement, but that communications itself can't be measured in a silo. We've got to speak the language of the broader business. So when we think about integrated framework and resource center here, do think about that as well. And on that note for now, I'll hand over to Professor McNamara. Thank you, Jim. So I just want to set a little bit of context to what you're about to see, the big reveal. Um, as most of you know, and you don't need me to report, repeat some of this, but evaluations had a fairly troubled uh, history. It was first proposed systematic evaluation by Edward Bernays and Arthur Page in the early 20th century. Uh, Tom Watson, who's written a history of evaluation, says there's been intensive focus on this for 40 years. But the fact is we still have a, a, not one model but a wide range of models and, and a wide range of theories on communication evaluation. We've also got a really troubling issue, this wide range of terminology. We talk about inputs and we saw a few of them on the screen, outputs, outtakes, outgrowths, out, uh, flows, effects, results. All these terminologies can get uh, confusing. We've got an even wider range out there of metrics and methods. So we talk about reach, impressions, sentiment, views, and so on. And there's media analysis and there's surveys. So whatever you, when you approach evaluation, there's this fundamental question of, when we say a framework, is where do these bits fit? That's one of the big issues. Um, and that's led to this lack of standards and, and a lack of tools. Uh, I find this a really interesting quote that uh, Phil Sheldrake said recently, uh, and this leads me to what I key framework or key context I want to mention. He said, I couldn't understand why PR needed to stand apart from the dominant approach to performance alignment and management um, adopted by the majority of functions out there uh, that you might find in a typical organization. What he was saying is, why is PR going off in another direction? What did he mean? Well, something we did in the academic advisory group, one of our sort of contributions to this, and this is the uh, the current academic group, so mostly sort of well-experienced academic researchers, so not just teachers, researchers, uh, representing a number of universities. What we did is we looked back into evaluation, not evaluation of PR, but evaluation per se, because many people don't seem to realize that evaluation is a very, very large field of, of practice. 
in management studies, in uh, public administration, uh, performance management, organizational development, etc. Um, there's, there's a whole, develop, a whole body of program theory, and I know we're not here to talk about theory, but program evaluation theory, theory of change, which is a body of knowledge about how humans change and why, and how do you change human, human attitudes. And a lot of that is operationalized in program logic models. Now, elements of program logic models have been picked up in PR, but what we did in the academic advisory group is went back to the basic literature. And I'll just give you a couple of examples. So, Kellogg Foundation, one of the world leaders in program evaluation, used by the US military, used by product development companies all over the world. And so the, the terms you hear, like inputs, outputs, what we want you to understand is we didn't make these up. These are not plucked, plucked out of the air. Where do we get them from? So when you look at this particular, just one example of a model, you see inputs, you see activities, outputs, outcomes, impacts. So you see a five-stage model. Another very widely known example is University of Wisconsin's extension program. For, and I'm talking from 1970s onwards. These are 30 and 40 years of data. Slightly different model, in, a three-stage model, inputs, outputs, outcomes, outcomes, impact, three or four stage. But they break outputs down into activities and participation and then break outcomes down into short, medium and long term. That's just two examples of very widely used program logic models across a lot of industries. In summary, what you can see is they suggest either a five or a six stage process of, uh, of planning and evaluation. So we went back to this literature, and what that tells us, this is not the AMIC framework, but it tells us conceptually what we need to understand is that what we do, while it, for the organization we have communication objectives, but we have inputs, activities, outputs, we have outcomes that could be described as short or intermediate or long term, or we might call those outtakes, and we might call the final one impact. So this, even though there's a little bit of variation, that slide is a summary of about 200 examples of program evaluation models that are used around the world. And so what we want to do is draw on that base of, basic of knowledge and say, we need to comply with that, because management performance management is based on that. Most evaluation in uh, public administration is based on that. If PR talks a separate language, it doesn't relate to management. Then the big question comes, well, that's all, that's all great. That's broad architecture. What fits in, in there? And um, don't be frightened by the next slide, but what we then did is we, and before I show it, I'll just mention the troubles we have with what goes in there is not, not unique. Here's a couple of comments. A common error in program evaluation is substituting measures from one level to another. A couple of Center and Broom in the textbook wrote that in uh, 1985. Um, Jim Bruning has said the same thing. Many practitioners use metrics at one level uh, for another level. And here's an example, not just PR people, even in the field of program evaluation, people often struggle with the difference between, say, outputs and outcomes. So just to give us some consolation, this is not a, we're not the only ones that have this problem. And so what Amex recognizing is we need to map out an architecture that looks like, or a framework that looks like what the industries are used to, and then try to work out what goes where, what metrics fit. Now, don't be frightened by this, but what the academic group then did was took all of the available literature, hundreds and hundreds of articles, and looked at words like exposure, reception, distribution, and where did they appropriately fit based on a majority. And what we've then done <laughs> is looked at, they all identify stages, key steps, they identify metrics and milestones, and then the methods to generate those. And so what we've done, and this is just a segment from not what you're going to see in the online tool, but what we then is drew a very large taxonomy where we said, if we're talking about inputs and activities, and so across the top, there are those key stages, after a short definition, what are the key steps? So exposure or reception or attention or awareness, where do they fit based on a large amount of published data? And then what are the metrics that might fit in there? And I'm only skipping through it, and under the metrics, what are the legitimate methods that might generate those metrics? And so this actually goes over pages and pages in an interactive tool. It won't be daunting like that. It'll pop up what is relevant. But basically, what we're going to look at is based on literature, not only academic, professional literature from other fields, following similar stages, and then a very detailed mapping 
of what fits where, so we don't start saying we're measuring uh, impressions and we think it's an outcome. No, you look at it and the framework will say impressions are valid, but this is where they fit. They're at this stage, at this level, and if you want to measure outcomes, here are the legitimate uh, methods. So I will leave, that's a bit of a quick summary of the background of what we did, and over to Giles. Thank you, Jim. So it's, uh, it's my pleasure to kind of introduce the integrated evaluation framework to you now and give you just a little snapshot of the process behind that and what that, in fact, looks like. So hopefully uh, it'll come up on the screen in just a minute. Where I think um, you've heard already today from Richard and Jim was the ability to uh, think about a tool that anyone could use in any form of communication, whether you were looking at stakeholder engagement or brand or, um, or crisis communications. It, no matter what you were doing in terms of your communications, we needed that to work. We also needed to look at a tool that anyone could use, from a graduate to a director, in-house, or uh, no matter what was required. So it was important that we would have a journey uh, from what you've seen already around organizational objectives to communication objectives, all the way through to impacts. And uh, what was really, really important is uh, the working group thought about this uh, from the perspective of um, making it very easy and visual to use. And we will get it on the stage in one minute, but it was also really, really important that um, we took a lot of what Jim's described in that information, that deep and rich set of data, and really thought about it from uh, ability to give people that advice when they're using the tool. So I'm going to just keep talking whilst we get the feed going. But <laughs> is um, just some other things just to bear in mind was it's a tile format. So when you look at uh, when you look and use the tool you can start to think about those organizational objectives. And we've got some case studies in a minute, and when we get the IT going, we will uh, get the feeds. So this is what uh, the tool looks like when you uh, land on the page. As you can see, it's tiled and very easily mapped. One, two, three, four. So it's really simple and very visual and exactly what Jim just described in terms of taking you through. I think one of the key things we've learned as a working group was the start of objectives. We cannot evaluate and measure successfully unless we are linked to the objectives. So I've taken one of the case studies on the website and I've pre-filled it just for this demo to help you. And we start here. We start at what are your organizational objectives? This is NHS uh, blood uh, program and campaign that was run. So what are the broad objectives of your organization? That's the strategic business object or organization objectives. And then underneath that, you then input your communication objectives. So they're going to be aligned to the organization. To help users, we also created an eye icon that would give people a little bit of information, okay, what do I put into this section? And if that little piece of information wasn't enough, this is where the work that Jim and the advisory, uh, academic advisory committee have been doing gives you that breakdown of that taxonomy, again, for users to go, okay, what is that element that I need to think about? So once you've done, uh, done that, you move on to the second section, inputs. <coughs> Who's my target audience? In this case, it was the general public. They were 18 to 24 year olds. And, between, and uh, specifically, black and Asian minority ethnic group. And then other elements to it, which was strategy, was uh, maybe situational analysis, for example. Data in the research you've already got, just to give some context to it. And again, you've got the icon and the further taxonomy. You then move into the activity. And this was a really important part of the working group because it has to be integrated. And here you'll see a really important part is we've used the PESO model. So pay, earn, social, or shared, and own. 
And here, at each element you can, and there's a lot, of, lot more Dropbox uh, underneath that you can fill in, you tag whether it was a paid piece of activity, earned, shared, or owned. Okay? That was really important so uh, people could get a real feel for that integrated programs that they'll be running. And again, the eye icon gives you that information. And then he moves through to output. So linking my activities, which was done by Peso, what was my output, which is a core metrics piece that we described. Again, linking back to whether it's paid, earned, shared, or owned. And then we get on to outtakes. And outtakes is the response or reaction to your program, okay? A difference between an outtake and an outcome. And again here, this was, for example, rising social media posts from 8,000 to 20,000. 12,000 tweets and retweets, for example. Those are some outtakes this campaign uh, attributed. And then the outcomes. Total registrations went from 22,000 to 47,000. These are the data points this campaign was able to provide. And again, outcomes. As a user, I'm not sure what my outcomes are. Tick the icon, and there you go. Oh, it's learning and knowledge. It's an attitude change. Is it the intention? Is there some advocacy involved? And again, the taxonomy that Jim described earlier is there for you to use. And I won't scroll down, there you go. Gives you further information as a user to think about what type of information can I put into the tool. And then, and outcomes are the same. And then impact. What impact has my campaign, or the work I've been doing, had on my organization? And ultimately, has that aligned to the organization and the communication objectives at the outset? Okay? Really important that we're linking you know, from A to B, or 1 to 7 in this case, are aligned and integrated. And so here, total donor registrations exceeded the monthly target of 40,000. So that, has a, that was a major organisational impact. Correlation between media coverage and donor registration. So you can link the work to donor registration. So when you've inputted all that information into that, those seven boxes so far, you get to, uh, you submit it. And this is where uh, it looks like this. Suddenly that piece of work and all those that tiles that were very easy for anyone to use is suddenly turned into this tool, preparation that we talked about, organizational objectives, communication objectives, target audience. Very clear, very simple. And activities, you can see here, they're all earned campaign activities. But if it was a paid piece of work, or an own piece of work, or a shared piece of work, it would reflect the P, or the E, or the S, or the O on the side. So again, showing that it was an integrated campaign. And I'm going to wrap in one minute, but what we can do next, and this was just some parameters that I just wanted just to flag to you, is because of data protection and because of the requirements of the global environment, AMEC can't store the data. So what we wanted to do as a team was to give you a, a way to extract that piece of work you've done. So we create a PDF generator so that you can save your work. But you can't, once you've PDF'd it, that piece of work has disappeared, but you can save it on the PDF and, and share it, or then use PDF extractors to, to keep working on it. Also, uh, it really, uh, we decided that we would make it uh, available on the phone, make it usable on a phone, because we didn't think this was going to be very practical on a phone. It's usable on a desktop or a tablet. So when you PDF it, it just goes, it just creates that format, and I'm not going to do that right now. So that's the tool. I think it's, it's just a, a really easy journey from uh, through the whole process. But there are other aspects to it, and I'm just going to wrap and show you other pieces of this uh, tool. Loads of supporting material. Importantly, and I think for the first time, and I do I think we should give this credit, we have a taxonomy, and that's a really, really useful piece that Jim described. There are expert opinions, there are endorsements, there's resources, there's downloads, there are case studies. So this NHS one I just described is available. So giving users a lot of resources to understand how to complete and use this in their own work day to day. Absolutely uh, very, very important. And so let me just give you a little, so for example here, expert opinions. Uh, it's a whole microsite, for example. Uh, it's a really uh, powerful tool. And this is where it's going to start to live and breathe. And you can use this as a real resource center for the first time. And the tool is just one part.
of the integrated evaluation framework. So I think this is a great uh, point for our industry. I think it's a really great, we should need to uh, just share it. We need to evangelize it. We need to get using it in our organizations and with our clients or with our end users. But I think, don't take my word for it. Uh, let's hear what the industry also has to say for it. Measuring and evaluating PR campaigns has never been an easy task. Historically, comparing editorial values to their advertising equivalents seemed like a seductive idea. It put a monetary value on what we do and people bought into it, but it was nonsensical. The Barcelona principles of 2010 and 2015 recognised the need for measurement of real outcomes rather than just outputs. It was a huge step forward for public relations and evidence of an increasing commitment to professionalism. We can't, however, stand still or pretend that change doesn't continue. That's why, as president of the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, I'm committing to supporting AMEX move to bring a new measurement model out and will work with them to help bring their new interactive framework to the market. This new approach from AMEC is exactly what the PR industry has been waiting for. What I like about the AMED Valid Metrics 2.0 framework is its simplicity. I've seen the methodology and I like the logical step-by-step -step process. I trust AMEC to have got it right too. The PRCA and ECO have a strong history with AMEC. We both challenge and support each other and that has to be the healthiest of relationships. This is how important I judge the new AMEC Valid Metrics framework to be. I commit that ECO will recommend to all 48 country PR associations in our membership to work hard to get their 2,500 agencies to adopt this new AMEC framework. Let's make this happen. As AMEC chairman, I started the initiative a year ago to develop a new integrated framework. I'm delighted that Richard Bagnall and a team from AMEC and Lewis PR are launching that tool at this AMEC Summit in London. The measurement framework of AMEC allows to have in one seul point all the elements to construct its evaluation of campaign ERP. Et en fait, c'est tellement bien visualisé que ça en fait un outil très très simple pour utiliser tous les jours. This new AMEC integrated measurement framework it allows me to have on the same page all the components to uh, elaborate my PR campaign evaluation. And it's such a great visualization that it's becoming a daily tool for me. AMEX integrated evaluation framework, something that we've needed in Asia Pacific for such a long time. So I sent here is right behind it. A common question that I get asked in India is, show us how to do it. And this integrated framework really answers and takes you through that answer. Having been involved with the framework since its inception when it was just a spreadsheet, it's very exciting to see everything come alive and the model being able to really show communicators how they can demonstrate not only outputs, but outcomes in their communications. I believe the new integrated evaluation uh, platform framework is an absolutely great platform to uh, integrate in a practical manner best measurement principles and I can't wait to share it uh, with the rest of the African continent. En Global News siempre estuvimos comprometidos con los principios de Barcelona. Gracias a este nuevo framework vamos a poder ver mucho mejor esos principios siendo operativos. At Global News we have always been committed with the Barcelona principles. With this framework we will be able to better visualize the principles and make our clients better visualize them. At Ketchum we couldn't be more excited for the launch of the new integrated metrics framework. We really see this as putting the Barcelona principles into action and giving practitioners the tools they need to set proper goals for their campaigns. The integrated evaluation framework is so exciting that the AMIC board voted and adopted it today. And it's our job to now move forward and promote it worldwide to make sure that there's understanding, awareness, and adoption. I really think that uh, to use and the simple use of the framework can maybe for the first time ever to put the measurement on the very important agenda in Central and Eastern Europe. This is the diagnostic door opener for a genuine, easy to use measurement framework. And Ogilvy fully supports AMEC in running a global education campaign to support implementing this framework. The new tool is a major landmark for our industry. Lewis is proud to have been involved and we need the whole industry to get right behind it to show the power of measurement. As leader of the Integrated Evaluation Framework team, I'm thrilled at all the positive reaction we're getting from the PR and comms industry right across the world.
Thank you very much, Giles, for um, taking us through it. So I think what you can see then is it's a really easy to use tool, which we would urge you to share with your clients and share as widely as you possibly can in all of the regions around the world. One of our focuses has to be now from moving from talking about this stuff to implementing it. We're not looking for new metrics, we're not trying to invent new scores. All the resource that we need now exists and it's all in one place. Um, the site has now gone live um, and hopefully if IT is working here, there it is. That is the URL at the top. If you go, um, you go there now, you should find the site is live. So it's amecorg.com forward slash amec framework. amecorg.com forward slash amec framework. Um, there's a lot, there's a wealth of information by some real thought leaders in there. Um, and I, I, I'd like to call out a few of those people. So Stephen Waddington uh, from Ketchum, Ginny Dietrich, who uh, writes the Spin Sucks uh, blog, uh, Charlie Snow on the Evaluation Council from Mullin Low, basically an advertising planning agency, has contributed some thought leadership, and Professor Kevin Money of the Henley Business School, who's Professor of Reputation has as well. There's all kinds of articles, uh, there's resources, there's a bibliography, there's links to where you can, if you're trying to think, well, how do I get this owned media metrics that I need, there's links to where you can source that kind of information. There's no more excuses for us to be stopping at output measurement only. As a trade association, we've got to move to integrated measurement. And this framework, this resource center gives you every answer that you can need. There's more, and I'm grateful to friends and colleagues in the room for their endorsements on the video. There's more endorsements from industry leaders um, uh, on the site as well, including Dr. Rockland uh, and, and um, Alex Aiken for the cabinet office as well. Um, I'm very grateful to these two gentlemen for all the work that they've done, and it has been a labor of love. Um, I'm particularly grateful to uh, one of Lewis's developers, a chap, he's not here unfortunately today, but called Umang Doki, who has worked weekends, nights, um, to make this tool so pretty, engaging, and easy to use, and, and when, you, when you come to use it, you'll see that yourselves. Um, and the wider group as well, so obviously Jim and, and Giles up there, but um, the, the core group that developed this included uh, my old friend and colleague Paul Hender from Gorkana, um, and Elaine Phillips from the UK Cabinet Office. We've heard about the Academic Advisory Group, and then the wider group um, down the right-hand side as well, uh, who, who put so much thought process into, into what we went on to develop. And um, I also wanted just to acknowledge the contribution that um, Don Bartholomew made as well. At all stages of this process, I have wanted to keep Don's approach alive and, and relevant. Um, Don, as we heard yesterday, um, was a great leader of our industry. And Don had this great gift of taking complex things and making them approachable, incredible, and simple to understand and meaningful. And that's guided me uh, at every step as we've, we've worked on this. And uh, I hope that, that Don will be um, watching us and proud that his, his uh, legacy continues. Um, thank you to, um, to the team. I um, hope you're excited about it. So um, yeah. what I'm going to do now um, is invite questions to the panel. You might have um, something you want clarification on, an explanation on. Um, we want to keep this pretty fast moving, um, if you will. So I'm looking for the first comment or question with a hand up, and then we can come to you. Okay, uh, your own Shorten from Publistat. Just to make sure, uh, it looks great. Uh, I will use it uh, straight away. Um, but everything you fill in is not stored on the AMEC side. Yes, that's, that's correct. If, if you want to save it, you need to um, press the uh, submit button, which, and, and then print PDF, and it allows you to download it to your own site, but it doesn't get stored onto Amex site. Okay, cool. And, you, and, and also, by the way, once you've created a framework, if you don't think, I need to add a bit, 
you can press the edit button and go back. And as long as it's in the session that you are currently in, it will reappear there for you. So it saves your work until you close the browser session out. And okay, then it, it doesn't save it. Okay. Good point of clarification. Right at the back. Come on at the back, thank you. Go right at the back, please. We can <coughs> rustle it along, thank you. Thank, thank you. My name is Les from Infomedia. Um, I'm, really, I'm really excited about this tool. It looks very easy to use. However, um, my worry is that maybe uh, I'm counting seven different types of uh, metrics. Uh, and for some customers, seven might be a little too much to manage. Uh, have you thought about you know, narrowing it down? Or what's your, what's your thought on the need to have seven, seven you know, uh, Divisions of, of measurement instead of say, say three, four, which is usually what clients they like. Sure. Like it to be more simple. So, um, yeah. so uh, there's not necessarily seven metrics. It could be three or four metrics inside the uh, example I shared. It was only a, a three or four metric for that case study. The one to seven was just a journey. It was just trying it was tile just to try and take people on the journey from the start of the process. Point one, all the way to seven. The box is, uh, you could, if you only had one metric, you have one metric, I'd be surprised, but, or if you had 20 metrics, uh, we've tried to uh, create um, a room for you to do uh, either, either three or four, or six or seven, eight or nine. We try to give that flexibility, because some campaigns are more robust than others, or more detailed than others, uh, but we, we should be detailed enough to be able to cover that off. I don't know if Jim, you've got any other comments. And, and just just to add to that, I mean, we identified six stages, inputs through activities, through to outcomes and impact, based on best practice literature. That's what experts are using. But you don't have to fill out every section. If you decided you don't want to fill out activities and you want to put it under, under outputs, it's your tool. You just leave that section blank and, and move on. And if you then want to know, well, what goes where, there are variations of the taxonomy for a three stage, four stage, five stage, or six stage alignment of the metrics to try and keep you within the right section. So it's quite flexible, but the six stages from inputs through to impact um, are what best practice is currently saying. And it's all I'm saying is it's what our colleagues in public administration, performance management, organizational development are using. And the PR industry is out on its own with slightly different stages and slightly different language. You can still customize, but we think we should be able to have a more, and we're talking about standards, it's necessary to move towards common definitions and common approaches if we ever want to achieve standards. Uh, I mean, I'd expect you to be using this to talk to prospective clients, current clients, about how to, how to plan and measure a campaign properly and how to tell your measurement story. It doesn't do everything for you. You still need to source the metrics yourselves and put them in there. And you still need to bring that human element of the insight and to, as I say, tell that story um, around it as well. Well, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you. So really for all of that work, Jim, and everyone. Um, and the second, could you kind of quickly maybe go by what's the single thing you really want us to all take away to go back to help launch this? I mean, we're, you know, we talked about supporting it. Are there a couple of quick things you'd really like us to all go back and do within the next week? Uh, I'd like you all to start sharing it with your own networks. I'd like it to um, get out there into our international chapters widely. Um, it's, it's Incredible and meaningful, but it's simple and easy to use. So it, it will work in every market around the world. It's it's an approach. It's a process, um, and it, it it's applicable everywhere. So I would ask all of our membership to get behind it, to support it, to promote it, to share. It. And Jenny, to your point, not just next week, but the week after, the week after, the week after, because this education challenge will never go away. It's an ongoing process, and we can't. We can't let up. As an, as an industry, we have to stop discounting outputs. So let's start looking to add in those outtakes, those outcomes, focusing on organizational objectives, helping clients see the importance of planning against targets, setting that out clearly. That's why we've got the activity section as well. 
um, and then and then working through the framework from there. And to build um, further on that, um, we've um, set a Sorry, uh, notional deadline of um, 19th of August, um, by which time we're inviting um, you, as, as um, Richard has been saying, um, to try it candidly, get to um, get to know how to use it, and um, give us any feedback uh, as a result of using it. Oh yeah. So of course we want we want people to test it, give us feedback of how they found it. If there, if there are issues and there are things that they think don't work that can be refined, and we're asking other industry uh, trade association colleagues to be part of that process as well. And I think as we've got a room of measurement companies here, it's important to say I'm not expecting every measurement company to put all of their measurement into that tool every single time, but it's it's an approach that you should be using in your own reports and you should be mapping to uh, that reflects um, the work of, of AMEC and your memberships of AMEC as well. Thank you. Not that I'm biased at all, but this is, I think, a fantastic tool. Um, and I know how the UK government is going to use it. So firstly, at the early planning stages, this is going to be used as our evaluation planning um, pro forma and we will be then printing those and using them. And then at the end, we'll also be using it as a bit of a reporting tool. Now, that reporting uh, might look different for different target audiences, obviously. Um, and I know it will differ from business to business, but is that how you see it being used as almost a dual approach as part of an evaluation planning and also a reporting function? Yeah, we didn't make that point clear enough, but anyone, <coughs> anyone who was in my session immediately before, I emphasized that evaluation is not something that's done at the end. There's formative, process and, and summative evaluation. So this, in fact, is a planning tool, and we shouldn't imply that you would fill out all those stages at the first go. You might fill out inputs and activities towards the beginning, then you put in your outputs, and then later. So it's filled out over a period, um, and it, is, it can be used as a planning tool uh, and a tracking tool or a framework, because you'll still have multiple tools you'll use to collect the data, and ultimately you can submit and have a, a simple summary after which you write the story. You know all the context, and that's where your insights come into play, but all the data across the whole stage of a campaign or a project is captured in one place. So it is, it integrates, it's, it's, we've used the word integrated, it integrates world best practice, it integrates the previous models, it integrates planning and evaluation. So it's integrated at every stage. Dr. David. Um, you know, I, I think that what you guys have done really open the door to help this industry move forward tremendously. If you think of the Barcelona principles and their uh, implementation, the hardest part of implementing them is that first one about how do you write effective goals that you can measure. And it looks like that the three of you and your, your colleagues have, have made such a huge step in, in, in answering that question or solving that problem, uh, not only for the people in this room, but for so many of our clients. So I, I think we all owe you a huge thank you for Thanks, Thank you, I'm looking for another hand in the air. We want to make this session as inclusive as we can. And we want to have a drink. Maybe the bar by now. Yeah, we want to have drinks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Celebrate. Uh, okay, I'll do one more, one more search for... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the floor. Though. Okay. So just to uh, just to remind you then about um, our next uh, steps um, as part of the, the the genuine wish we have to um, want uh, organisations with whom we have a good relationship, like um, uh, Eco PRCA, like the uh, CIPR. Um, like uh, IPR, um, to um, take a look at the model, um, try it, that's the key, try it. We're not saying test it, we're saying try it. And then feedback um, your comments by the 19th of August. <coughs> okay, so if there um, are no uh, further uh, questions for this part of, um, uh, this closing part of the conference, what I want to do now is um, thank the team 
um, for not only their work, but the presentation of it um, today. Um, and to then <coughs> invite Jeremy Thompson, um, the chairman of AMEC, to come on stage for the summit close. But thanks to the team.